Hi everybody, uh, I'm uh, Diago Comparini. I'm here on behalf of uh, uh, Peanut uh, Company. Uh, Camilla Pandolfi is the uh, CEO of the company. Uh, she shouldn't be, should be here, but uh, she had the last minute dedication, so uh, I'm here. Uh, just a little bit uh, of introduction of me. I work for the University of Florence. Uh, we have in the University of Florence this laboratory that is called the, the LIMV. LIMV is the International Laboratory of Plant Neurobiology, so we focus on plant, on very high innovation on plant. The director of, of our laboratory is Professor Stefano Mancuso, and uh, our uh, laboratory is in Florence, but it actually has a connection all around the world. Uh, the main um, collaboration are uh, with the University of Bonn. Uh, we also have a collaboration with uh, the Japan and the China with the University of Kitakyushu um, and uh, the professor uh, King Sin Lin. And we also have uh, a collaboration in Paris and uh, Spain. And these are the main uh, group we, we, in which we have uh, uh, actually uh, also joint laboratory. So we do a lot of projects together in a um, continuous way. And we have also other international collaboration all around Europe and the world. And uh, as you can see from here, we have uh, a lot of uh, increasing uh, number of publications all over the year. The international laboratory joining us are growing in the year. And also the funding that we are receiving uh, year after year are uh, as long uh, as also the publication impact factor is growing uh, in, the, in the last years. Uh, we have a lot of uh, facilities, uh, we have uh, a greenhouse, we have uh, a very high advanced uh, instrument, microconfocal uh, microscopy, we have uh, a, a um, device for uh, max spectro uh, spectrometry uh, analysis and uh, okay, a lot of things. Uh, if you are really interested, you can go in the, the page of the LIMV, it's LIMV.com and you can see uh, all the research that we are doing. We are more than 15 uh, people and with a lot of collaboration. Uh, I'm here uh, in, uh, to uh, present you uh, the Peanut. Peanut has born as a spin-off of uh, uh, our laboratory, in particular with the founder, Professor Stefano Mancuso and the other uh, uh, researcher. And uh, what he is doing is we are using Peanut because in the university we are doing uh, basic research and this basic research needs to be uh, commercialized or, or has been transformed in products or something that uh, can be um, really used for applied research. So we are using the high advanced technology of the research of the university and we use this laboratory to um, to give this knowledge to uh, Peanut and uh, develop uh, a further project. Uh, Peanut, uh, as you see, has been founded by Professor Stefano Mancuso, and there are both uh, researchers for the University of Peanut in the, in the board, but also is uh, a lot of um, uh, architectural uh, staff. So is uh, both scientific and architectural uh, members. Um, I'm here to present uh, all the projects that we have with the, uh, the Academia del Café and uh, mainly are three projects. One is on the traceability of coffee using the volatile compounds, so the aroma that these are uh, emitting. Uh, after we have uh, the conversion of the greenhouse that you have seen for sure in the middle of the big hall, uh, in a big fabrica dell'aria. I will tell you what is the fabrica dell'aria, but it's something that is used to purify the uh, indoor air uh, for, um, uh, for, for a better health of the people working in, in, inside. And also I will uh, show you a very short introduction of what uh, we, we use uh, as a sensoring for, uh, for the uh, coffee plantation and uh, how we can remote monitoring uh, during the cultivation uh, all the plants uh, in, in a coffee plantation. Uh, the first project is about the traceability of coffee using the Vox fingerprinting. This is uh, uh, the, big, um, the biggest uh, project. This is uh, uh, already one year project, so is the, the one you will see uh, more 
uh, more slide and more information. So um, what we are doing, uh, every, every food has his, uh, how say, his specific aroma. So this aroma can be um, used as a kind of a fingerprint. So every food, uh, this specific aroma can be uh, catalogized and classified in a, in a database. So what we are doing, we are, uh, are analyzing the volatile compound of uh, several coffee from all uh, over the world. Uh, in particular, uh, the first year we uh, analyzed more than 250 samples. Uh, in, in, in this case, specifically from um, uh, Arabica coffee with the with a specific uh, uh, device that I will present to you is a PTR TOF MS. And uh, uh, for this year, we use uh, four uh, distinct uh, geographical locations. And um, I will explain to you what is uh, the way uh, we, we, we use this uh, analysis uh, to, uh, uh, to have a traceability uh, chain on, uh, on coffee. So, uh, this is the proton transfer reaction time of flight uh, instrument. Uh, as you can see here, it's a very complex uh, an instrument, and I'm not here to explain you the, uh, how it's working, but you have just to think that it is a very, very advanced nose. It's just an electronic nose, and it is the, the most uh, sensible nose you can have uh, basically uh, now. It's a very, very high advanced technology. Uh, in Italy, there are probably two or three of these uh, instruments in all Italy and also in Europe uh, probably more not, not, not more than 10. So it's very um, uh, high level technology. Uh, this uh, instrument is uh, used for several uh, reasons. Uh, first, uh, can, um, uh, it's a really good thing because uh, you don't have any sample transformation. So this means that you can take the coffee, the grain, the, um, the powder, the roasted grain, uh, or just the uh, infuse, and you don't have to do nothing. You don't have to grind, you don't have to extract nothing. You just I take this uh, product and you just uh, put on the nose, you just sniff with the nose. And you can use it for the valorization, but also for the investigation. Very important for the fraud alert. If your um, product has some kind of difficult things, you know, it's very difficult during the, the tracking chains. So, and it's objective, so uh, it always gives you the same result. So if you give the, the same product, it will give you the same fingerprint and it's fast and it is miserable and repeatable. And with this kind of food, uh, you know, it's very difficult to have this uh, objective analysis, but because you usually use people. And people, you know, are really, uh, are not uh, so repeatable. They can change the, the, the evaluation, basically, uh, or where is the country, where is the time, also the same person, if uh, uh, taste the same food uh, in uh, different times, can have different uh, results. So this is a really important uh, uh, things that we that this instrument can do. Uh, this is uh, how we apply this uh, technology to the project. Uh, uh, here is uh, the the first year project uh, where we try the green bean, roasted bean, and also some uh, infuse and the powder. You just uh, do the analysis with this nose, and what you have is a kind of uh, profile uh, volatiles. So you see as kind of a figure print, and then you can use uh, this data both to have uh, some data analysis that I will show you just a little bit of information and also for have analytical information. So which are the compounds specifically that are more important for uh, your aim, for your objective. Uh, this is the uh, preliminary data just on the first year. Uh, uh, first we have to uh, understand which was the best matrix uh, between all the things to analyze, if it was the green bean, the roasted bean, the infuser, the powder, and which was the best uh, qu uh, quantity to use in this instrument, because it can uh, uh, be uh, too low or too high to have a good signal. So the, uh, this was kind of preliminary data on uh, to understand which was the best matrix and uh, quantity. And uh, this, is, uh, what, uh, this is the raw data on what you obtain. So this is a roasted bean, and as you can see from the, the X axis, you can see each one of these line is a compound. So, and the number is just the mass of this compound. So you can see how many compounds from one single uh, coffee you can have. So this is 
the uh, fingerprint profile I was uh, telling you before. And uh, you can see that uh, every coffee that you try has different uh, uh, compounds on volatile. Each of these lines is a compound or can be also a fragment. So also using both the compound that you obtain and the pattern of fragmentations, you can really um, discriminate uh, all uh, the, um, the features that uh, you are looking for. These are uh, other do, uh, uh, the powder. This also, as you can see, is much, much more rich because when you powder the coffee, you create a lot, a lot of more uh, aroma, a lot, and each this aroma is resulting in several uh, compounds. This is uh, the comparison of two coffee, the Brazil and the Kenya. As you can see, there is a, a very different in, uh, in the height, so in the concentration, but also in the, the number of compound that you can find. And this is just one gram of powder, so think about how sensible is this instrument. And this is the, the coffee uh, infused, and also the coffee infused is very, very diluted, because uh, if you have put a very, very high um, concentration, it gives you too much uh, a high intensity. And this is a thesis that we use, so this is, uh, I present you the instrument, so this is what you can do with this instrument. And this was a very um, simple uh, experiment that we do for a thesis for a master uh, student. And um, we use different matrix from roasted bean, uh, coffee powder and infuse. And we decide uh, to take uh, uh, different coffee. And the, the only different things from this coffee so was uh, the same country, the same uh, varieties, the same process, but was different altitude. So we took uh, one from the low alt, uh, meter, medium, so over, uh, over 1,200 1, meters, there is usually the hay when the coffee quality increase, uh, until uh, 1,700 meter. And then we, bo we both uh, perform the instrumental analysis and sensor sensorial analysis. And uh, here I didn't present you the result because uh, I have actually at the end, if we have time, I can show you because it's more like a technical. But we could discriminate that uh, uh, the medium and high uh, altitude coffee was uh, very similar, uh, whilst the 900 meter was very low in, uh, in the uh, fingerprint uh, profile. So to understand that uh, the, um, the quality of the coffee can be discriminated just toward the analysis of the coffee. And this was in accord with the, the panel, with the sensor analysis. And this uh, was instead the uh, experimental phase of the whole experiment. It's uh, over 250 uh, uh, coffee, so this uh, is a huge uh, number of, of analysis because we usually do two or three analyses sometimes. So if you have 250 coffee, it's 500 or 70, 50 analysis. So it's a really ringy long project. We have coffee from four different locations, Guatemala, Honduras, Costa Rica, and El Salvador. And, uh, we try to discriminate some, uh, uh, how you say, some features. So, uh, first of all, the country of origin, and we uh, build a, 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 say, a fingerprint classification algorithm. And with, uh, with our algorithm, just having the coffee and just with the smell, you have the 84% uh, uh, probability to understand which is the origin of your coffee. So this is very, very powerful. Um, technology. The process also, uh, you can uh, discriminate if it's natural or uh, washed, uh, fermented or semi honey and with a very high accuracy, so 78%. And also you can understand if it's a mono origin or is a blend. Uh, also this is very technical graph, I show you something very more easy to understand. This is the variety blend, so you can see how the same uh, blend, these are actually uh, several samp different samples, how they are really similar uh, between each other. So if you have the same blend, the, the instrument uh, will uh, group them in the, same, uh, in the same space. So it's very uh, use, useful to understand how discriminate. You can see also the IHC, all the uh, variety blends that have the IHC90 varieties is all really together. So this can be also a good uh, uh, instrument for the traceability. 
So I'm going to do it a bit fast because we are uh, late. So this is how we convert the greenhouse in the Fabrica dell'Aria. So uh, uh, this uh, is going to be one of the biggest Fabrica dell'Aria that uh, we have ever built with the peanut. And the Fabrica dell'Aria can remove volatile compounds that are bad for the health, but also the particulate, the, the PM that are bad for the, for the brief. It's a, it's a very easy um, uh, say process, so you just take the uh, polluted air and you circulate in a, in a system to clean the air. And uh, this is how it works. So it just the air comes from the bottom of the, of the greenhouse and go through the soil with a special mechanism that go to this. And the soil also is a specific mix of particles that has a bacteria and has a plant root. So this, uh, um, is, a, is working as a natural filter, but also help the bacteria to absorb and the root to absorb the bad things for the health. And then after it's go, going to the, through the soil, it goes to the, the, the plant leaves. So also the leaves is, uh, is going to um, absorb and eliminate the, the bad uh, particles. So what we are trying to do with this uh, Fabrica dell'Aria that is uh, now um, is, is built around the world. We have some pharmacy, some shop, uh, and uh, both in Italy, but also in all Europe, is to recreate inside uh, the working space or where you go uh, to, to shop a, a good environment as in the, country, the countryside. So in the countryside, in the open air, the air is without any box and without particle matter. So we want to recreate this uh, healthy air also inside the, the indoor uh, ambient. And as you can see, both in, uh, in the city, but also in, um, in, inside the, the office, the air is always more polluted than outside. And the, the third uh, uh, project, uh, if you have a question after, you can ask more, more things, is uh, uh, how we can uh, use uh, our technology, in particular the remote sensing, uh, to, um, to, uh, how say, to bring the coffee plantation more close to the person. Um, this, uh, this project has, uh, is not really uh, planned, it has still uh, to start, and uh, we want to uh, document and show how the contribution of the sustainable production of coffee uh, helped to remove the CO2, and um, Lady Foundation of uh, uh, the, the best IoT things we have seen also uh, in the welcome speech, uh, 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 the, he has uh, highlighted the importance of the IoT in this period uh, for the human. And uh, so, uh, how these uh, specific IoT teams can be used uh, to manage for the best management of, of, uh, of uh, coffee plantation. Uh, here is uh, the, the main uh, sensor that we use uh, in the University of Florence we are trying to develop because uh, there are, okay, these sensors are already um, develop in commercial, but some of these actually you cannot find in commercial, but are really, really so new in research that is just in a research environment. I'm speaking about, for example, a soil gas exchange. There is not really commercial solution. And for example, the electrical activity of plant. These are uh, sensors that uh, they are used in the research now, but uh, they are not really available for commercial. So, what we want to do is to, do, uh, to put all these sensors in the uh, coffee plantation, in, in particular with the, also with the webcam, so that uh, when you uh, try your coffee at home, you have a kind of um, a QR code that you can scan and you can see your, co your coffee uh, where it's from. So with the plantation, you can see the picture of your coffee growing. So, so it's not that you are going to the coffee plantation, but the coffee plantation come to you. So you can see how it has been grown, how the humidity and temperature has changed during all the cultivation, how if the plant were suffering for something, maybe some sickness. And all these things uh, can be, uh, as I told you, just um, collected remotely and stored in a server to be used later uh, for the both well, for the commercial for example um, a label or for the clients 
And this is, uh, uh, okay, just cutting here, how I just put how the electrical activity works, is very similar things. And how is, uh, it's, for example, it's, e it's very easy for the detection of hydric e stress or, or other stress in the, in the plant. This is just an algorithm that we have developed. In the red, there is the stressed plant for hydric stress, and in the blue is a not stressed plant. And you can see how the, if you have a very good algorithm, you can automatically understand when, when is the plant is suffering for the water and when the plant is not suffering. And this is so you can also use it for an automatic plantation or just to suggest to the grower which is the best practice, to, which is the best moment to, to do some treatment. So thank you for the attention. If you have any, any question, you can also ask me later, I will be around.